Everyone knows about Portugal's beaches, but what about its dinosaurs, medieval fortresses and forested mountains, complete with walkways and one of the largest pedestrian suspension bridges in the world? This country packs a big punch for its size, and for our last video, we're seeking out some lesser known spots in Portugal, away from the beach and further inland. If you're new around here, we're Jack and Joe, that's our scruffy hitchhiker Frank, and this is Big P, our adventure home on wheels that's taking us all around Europe and the UK. Join us in our final week of Portugal as we set out to find if there's more to this country than just its gloriously beautiful beaches. Prepare to be surprised. So, put your feet up, click subscribe, and come along for these wild journeys in Portugal. After watching the giant waves in Nazare in our last video, you find us nestled a bit further inland, up high in the hills of one of Portugal's many national parks. Nice stick, Frank. Where'd you get that? Found it, didn't you, Frank? You taking that away from this national park? Take anything, you leave things at footprints, remember? Oh, yeah, nah, it'd be fine. You can take a stick. You found it on the floor, everyone. You didn't take it from a tree. You didn't take it from a tree. I'll explain. We've changed all of our plans for Portugal. We've actually only got a week left. We were going to go down to the Algarve, but then we decided actually we really love the coast around here. It's pretty carefree. Nazare happened, which means that we lost basically four days of driving because we wanted to go watch the big waves. So now we're going to see a bit more of this area around Portugal, venture a bit inland on the way out of Portugal, and our first stop is to see some dinosaurs. Not actual dinosaurs. Some actual dinosaurs. <laughs> You'll never believe, basically they've recreated Jurassic Park in Portugal. All right, they definitely haven't got real dinosaurs in Portugal. But our first stop on our tour beyond its beaches was to the Pagadas de Dinosaurus Natural Monument, home to some of the largest collection of dinosaur footprints in the world. We're two notice boards so far, so you're ready for some dinosaur facts. So these dinosaurs are sauropods, they're 30 metres long and weighed 70 tonnes, which is, Joe do the math, 70 tonnes, big piece 3.5 tonne. Twenty times as big as Big P, um, and these footprints are here when uh, Europe and North America were together in one big like Pangaea continent. And yeah, really cool. And you can see the footprints from up high on this loop that goes round the, the kind of dinosaur area, um, and it's in an old quarry. Look how big that is. Wow, Joe, they would have been massive. Yeah. Just seen on the board, it said like the footprints would have been 60 centimetre in diameter and 90 centimetre long. So just huge, like ludicrously big. My second favourite dinosaur, um, sauropods are after Triceratops. That was a really cool hour to go see the dinosaur footprints. If you like dinosaurs or you, well, if you want to be a big kid and look at dinosaur footprints, it was a really cool, different thing to do. I think that's what we're trying to do in the next week or so. Go and do things that aren't the things that we've been doing for the past like month or so, which is to go to the beach. So glad we went here. There's a few other things that we're going to go to that we passed on the way down through Portugal. And we're like, oh, maybe next time. But seeing as we're not going down to the Algarve, we're going to go do them. Yeah, onwards to find our spot for the night, a bit closer to the coast. I think what I'm going to be doing the next two weeks is just getting sand out of my shoes. It just keeps coming and I don't know where it's coming from. Ah. Joe has a big problem with sand and stones. <laughs> but it's just like relentless. Have you got a hole in your shoe? Don't, no, because it's not, the, it's not the stones from here. It's the stones from in Na Nazare. 
Those shoes. waves, man. They're just strong, aren't they? <laughs> Blow stones into your shoes from here. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see you in the next spot. Good morning. We left the National Park yesterday and we've come to Laguna de Obidos, which is a bit closer to uh, the coast, but it's actually a tidal lagoon. And it's probably the first time on this trip that we've at, that we followed Charlie and Tash somewhere, as opposed to them following us. Um, we were promised paddle boards and warm weather. At the moment it's a bit grey at the moment. But We'll hope it'd be a nice place to chill out. It's got some nice walking routes, running, some bird watching. So yeah, looking forward to maybe just chilling out here for the rest of the day. We waited and waited for the sun to come out, but despite the weather reports, it didn't look like the sun wanted to play ball. So we did what any other traveler frustrated with the bad weather does, and hastily moved on to our next non-beach location, the fortress town of Obidos. It's cold today. It's cold, Obidos. Oh my God. I haven't even introduced where we are, so that joke won't even make sense. It's cold today, so we've gone to a town called Obidos. <laughs> Colbados. Uh, yeah, just because it's going to rain tomorrow, and we've always driven past this town on the mo on the motorway that's near here, and I've always wanted to go. So we're going to go explore it. There's like an old like fort town, lots of castle walls that you can walk across. It's going to be good. Good for a little mooch, I reckon. But Charlie and Tash recommended it. They went the other day. Charlie and Tash got it wrong, and I blame them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, blame we bought a van. Yeah. Frank straight up, isn't he? So there's uh, danger signs, but nothing to stop you from going up. Here we go. Do you know how long all the walls are in total? Yeah. Three kilometers. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you the age old question every time we go into a tiny little like village. Mm -hmm. Imagine driving the van down a road like that. I'd actually, I'd actually be sick and cry at the same time. <laughs> All jokes aside, despite the grey weather, we really enjoyed this town and its ancient medieval houses, its castle and all the walls which you can walk along and which maybe wouldn't pass a health and safety check back home. I think Frank's probably had the best time out of all of us in Portugal because all he's done is just run around on the beach. He's disgusting, he stinks, he's covered in sand. Yeah, he's salty, salty, he's sticky. If you stroke him, it's just like, an... <laughs> that was an awful face. Yes, look at him. He's sad to leave Portugal. No, you know, Miss Riley and Winnie, I'm going to the beach with Riley and Winnie. Sometimes they take a ball to the beach with Riley and Winnie. Oh my He's listening out for them. Frank, are, they, are they there? Frank, are they up here? Oh, sorry, no. <laughs> so after leaving Obidos, which is when we last spoke to the camera, we came back to where else but Baliao because 
it's suddenly dawned on us that we basically have when are we back in the UK Joe? Uh, next weekend in like eight days so we need to start we need to leave Portugal we should drive back to Calais so we can get the train back so we thought, what do we want to do for our last few days? <laughs> You're right, Joe. Loads of water, water and sand. <laughs> so we thought, what do we want to do for our last three days working um, on the road? And we thought, well, we'll go back to Balliol because we can surf after work, and the internet here is super quick, like 200 megabytes per second. Anyway, we've had a lovely final day. We've been for a surf. We've been for a dog walk. Frank's actually been for two dog walks today, so he's knackered. And we're going to head off to a final stop in Portugal find our spot for the night and then tomorrow we're going to do something really really cool but before we leave Balliol we need to say goodbye to our friends Charlie and Tash oh, oh I can't believe it bye guys oh, it's emotional yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh of course you will <laughs> bye we drove for close to three hours First we headed north back to Porto where we'd begun our Portugal trip a month or so ago and then eastwards, up winding mountain roads through cloud and tree filled hills into a rural, wild part of Portugal. Good morning from the Goatfield Car Park. We are in Aruca Geo Park, which is a national park which is kind of south and across from Porto, so back up into the north of Portugal. Took about, how long was the drive yesterday, Joe? Three hours? Um, Three a bit hours. But we wanted to come here when we first came into Portugal, but because the van was busted, we didn't. And now we're here. It's nice and quiet, like super quiet last night compared to where we've been staying. And we've just been woken up by people arriving in the car park to go on the hike that we're going to go on this afternoon. And then also by these goats. Not often you could say that you're woken up by a herd of goats outside your window. So it's the afternoon. I booked tickets to do uh, this activity which is the second largest pedestrian suspension bridge in the world um, it's in a place called Aruca Geopark um, and I booked it this afternoon because it's supposed to be a morning of rain and it basically hasn't been a morning of rain but it's been very nice to chill out Joe's got maybe 50% of the sand out of the van still still got a bit of work to do I just caught up on some uni work but now we're going to go for our walk it basically takes you along some walkways which are called the paver little pathways of pave or something like that, I can't remember. But um, yeah, it's really beautiful around here. It's like a really kind of muggy, cloudy day, but it's quite nice. And it's nice to have a different uh, style of nature to what we've been used to in Portugal for the past month and a half. More trees, there's a massive river, and the views are really, really nice. Oh, and we've had to leave Frank behind because this isn't a dog-friendly activity. But he's been for a walk this morning and the van is all nice and cool and Joe's got a camera to check in on him but he doesn't really do anything does he? He just sits on the sofa and chills so he likes it, Simon, it? yeah yeah I mean we are quite annoying so that's understandable so after a walk along the river which takes you along there we've now got to go oh god it's a lot of up Joe like a walkway that'll take you all the way up there down through the canyon Whew, quite a lot of up on these steps 
But the reason we've done it from this side of the bridge, oh, let me just catch my breath, it's because you get to do some of this walkway, which takes you along the river and the, and the canyon. The whole walkway does go for eight kilometers one way, but we can't really do that with Frank. So we're doing a little portion of it today. I think it's about a kilometer and a half and then going over this bad boy. So you can see that through the trees. Nervous? Just a bridge at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I can try and move it if you want. <laughs> Not the answer you wanted, was it? <laughs> Just start jumping up and down on it. Yeah, 50 stories high and 516 metres long, so half a kilometre across the canyon. And it does move a bit, but you get safety briefing at the start and then you walk across. The views are pretty cool. And they only let 70 people across at a time over like a course of an hour. So you don't get too crowded out. Really cool experience. And because they don't let too many people on, you can really take your time and look at the view. And if you wait around the other side for a little bit, you get a free run and there's not actually that many people on it whilst we're on it right now. So I think that's actually the end of our final Portugal video. We've had an awesome time over the past five, six weeks. How long have we been here for? It's flown know. by. It's been amazing though. Yeah. It's been a great time. And the last week or so where we've not been at beaches has proved to us that there is definitely more to Portugal um, than its beaches. There's so much more to do. In fact, we're in the Dora region now. And like, if we had more time, we'd probably explore more of inland Portugal. But alas, we need to head back. Our Schengen time's running out, um, but yeah. Just a beautiful country um, and the perfect place to have a winter escape. We're now going to be heading back to England. By the time this video out is out, we might be travelling back to England or we'll be in England. We've then got a month or so where we're just going to be chilling. We've, we've become an uncle and aunt uh, two times in the space of about a week, which is really, really exciting for everyone in my family. Um, so the next time that we'll be filming is in May time, where we're heading back to our top tier favorite country in the whole entire world scotland where we'll be spending a summer exploring the highlands and more of scotland's amazing islands and wildlife we're genuinely so excited i can't even tell you it's just going to be amazing so yeah if you haven't already click subscribe let us know if you've got any questions and we'll catch you in a month or two bye, bye.